Hey, this is a Hakawadi production. Hey friends, welcome to the men's room. Making it in the music industry is no small feat. It takes a certain kind of person and some serious grit. Talent and a great voice? That's just the beginning. If you're going to have any chance at all, you'll definitely need a USP or a unique selling point. You'll have to be tireless about marketing yourself on social media and music platforms. You'll probably need to network on a daily basis to meet all the right people. And all that's on top of coming up with music, videos, and knowing how to mix it all together. My next guest is proof that if you do all of those things, it'll eventually pay off. She's a Moroccan-American singer, songwriter, and influencer based in Queens, New York, who's built herself a following of over 230,000 followers on Instagram, and her music is picking up steam across all the platforms. At last count, she had over a million plays on streaming platforms here in the Middle East. Please welcome to the show, Dunya. Hey, Dunya, how are you? Hi, what's poppin'? It's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much. It's great to be on here. <laughs> so I have to tell you, I'm a big fan of your music, and I love how unapologetically honest you are as an artist. You really represent this kind of new generation of girls and women who don't want to conform to this mold that society has created. So is that something that you consciously think about? Hmm, I mean, I've always been drawn to... Uh music and just presence that's been transparent and authentic I think that's what always has inspired me growing up and just in general so it's just something that comes natural to me I feel like anything else is just like a little whack and boring no offense so what do you listen to what inspired you also growing up that you decided you wanted to to get into music um honestly it was I think more so the people around me and also just like I was just reading a lot of books about uh, unconventional characters that were just unapologetic in their existence. So I think that was my main uh, inspiration. And also maybe like Eminem and Taylor Swift. <laughs> Eminem, yeah. Good one. What? Which books? Um, I remember reading like a bunch of like... There was this one book called Does My Head Look Big in This? And it was like a Muslim a Muslim shorty growing up and like wearing the hijab and kind of like exploring her identity and whatnot. So that was a book I definitely remember, like defined a lot of my, uh, my mindset and like being more comfortable myself and whatnot. Yeah. because you were born in Queens, New York, but your mom sent you to, who's Moroccan, sent you to Morocco as a baby so she could work and you stayed there till you were eight. So how did that shape you? Were you in a strict Muslim household? Did you ever wear a veil? Um, you're 23 now. Yes. Um, it wasn't that strict. It was like a little bit. I mean, my mom isn't that strict, but my like, you know, just certain parts of my family are. So uh, just certain parts of my family. When I was growing up, I did have a phase where I made the, de the decision to wear the hijab. I don't really... <laughs> I think it's because I was really inspired by that book. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I did that for a little bit. And How old it was, were you? It was interesting. I don't even remember. I think I was like... I think I was like 12. <laughs> it was like maybe for like a year or something. I'm not even sure. I just remember going on vacation and being like, all right, I'm... <laughs> I'm gonna take a break. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I was a kid. So. <laughs> clearly, the veil has come off. <laughs> yeah, but it's not. It's uh, I guess it's normal as a kid to explore the different aspects of your of your personality and your persona because that is a part of you. But clearly, you've kind of uh, embraced a whole other side of yourself and and who you are. Um, when you came back to New York. Um, and eventually, you know, since then, you, you've kind of grown into what you're doing now, which is, you know, you became an influencer, uh, an artist. You started producing music a few years ago. Um, and you're obviously very comfortable with your sexuality. Um, do you get a lot of um, blowback from those more conservative parts of your family or from the Muslim community uh, in general, maybe in the U.S.? I mean, I just don't even answer those phone calls, you know? Like, I don't even have those conversations. <laughs> like, my space is only, like, my immediate family, which is my mom, my little brother, 
and they're pretty supportive. And you know what? Every time I talk to anybody from my extended family, it's all love. Nobody's really like, nobody goes out of their way to criticize. Um, even if they do carry, I'm sure some of them carry their own opinions and whatnot, but that's kind of not my business. That's good. I think that's one of the differences uh, when you're being an artist in, in the West, you kind of get to operate on a you know freer level. Because certainly if you were operating in Morocco, for example, and you were doing the same music, even if your family let it slide, I mean, the laws and stuff would probably not allow you to, to be as free, as open. I mean, you have, you know, your, the videos you create are pretty sexy. Your lyrics are raw, mm -hmm. um, you know, so... So that's definitely a huge advantage, I guess, of being in the West. By the way, congratulations on the new album. I know that uh, you're releasing the tracks kind of one at a time. How many tracks are on that album? Uh, I'm not really working on an album right now. I'm kind of just releasing music that's mostly self-produced and self-engineered. So my focus this year with, you know, the current events of the world and whatnot was to kind of evolve my own craft and self-sufficiency. So, yeah, I'm just dropping music along the way. I mean, definitely some of the drops are going to make it onto my next project, but um, but definitely not all of them. That's my mistake, though. I, I thought that because you have De La Vushin. How do you pronounce it? De La Vushin. De La Vushin. Oh, yeah, much better. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I somehow thought that that was an album. But I guess it's not. You're just releasing singles, which is interesting. The music industry has changed so much. And I'm sure now also with everything that's happening, it's changing even more. So tell me about the music. Do you write and produce everything on your own? Do you have a studio in your house? How does that all happen? Yeah, I mean, I've written every single thing on my own thus far. Um, I've produced a lot of my music at this point just most recently i think i've done the most self-produced stuff self-engineered stuff too um yeah i just whipped up a little home studio you know just with everything being closed and whatnot um a couple months back so i just made it a priority to get my setup together and to this day i'm still really perfecting my mix and um my recording situation So I think that's a really uh, important component of it is, you know, getting your your paint and your canvas right for your painting. But yeah, so um, usually I, I love to work with different producers and I still do that to this day. I get, you know, beats to my email and whatnot, but I do miss being physically in a studio with, with producers. I've worked with some amazing people in my time for my projects. So you're very enterprising, clearly, because you're pretty much doing everything on your own, right? Like the videos, would you, for example, finance them as well? Do you, do you like have people that volunteer to do them with you or do you, do you end up paying them? I mean, the industry has changed so much and people still have this illusion that you can sign with a label and they'll give you an advance and, you know, help create everything with you. But the, the truth is that it's mm -hmm. such a doggy dog world now that you have to really mm -hmm. b do stuff on your own and be like a business person as much as you are an artist. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, you definitely have to be a business person. There's so many different factors that you start you start recognizing Um, I mean, Empire was amazing. They're great. We definitely had, you know, allocated budgets for videos and stuff like that for high for higher budget videos. But a bunch of my videos, if not most of them, are just, you know, self-funded, self-created. But, um, yeah, there's a bunch of different factors that definitely have to go into play that I recognize as I get further down my career that I might have not recognized initially, which is like, yes, you have to be... A business business minded you have to be your own number one you're the ceo so you, you have to you really have to be that energy and that power you really can't expect to put anything into anybody else's hand you can simply be grateful for ever for everybody's support which is something i had to learn is gratitude over expectation gratitude over entitlement because at the end of the day nobody's going to um, care about your operation as much as you are you're the one supplying the main fuel and that's how it should be you should care the most about your own art and your own um, trajectory so so yeah different factors for sure yeah that makes a lot of sense so 
where are you releasing your albums? I know you're doing really well on Anhami here in the Middle East. Um, so what are some of the other platforms that you use to kind of promote your stuff? Um, I definitely Spotify. I like Spotify because I just see my, you know, followers and stuff like that. Monthly listeners, streams. That's really dope. I'm really glad that people are listening to me on Angami. Um, but yeah, I'm everywhere. Apple, you know, Deezer, whatever, all the things. But I think definitely I like I like Spotify just because, um, I don't know, I, I I use it and I can see like my fans and stuff. But I definitely want to tune in to all the other. Everyone loves Spotify. They're doing things right <laughs> in a lot of ways. So what what music are you listening to these days? Do you listen to other artists? Do you get inspired by other artists? Or, or like, where do you get these crazy ideas for the, these songs that you're that you're writing? Thanks so much. Well, honestly, I feel like my songs are really divinely inspired. You know, like it really comes from the soul. But um, yeah, I definitely like music. I mean, I listen to it occasionally. I'm not a huge music listener. It's like I more so observe music. Like, for, you know, like I'll listen to a project just to observe it, but I won't really bump it in my day to day life. Usually in my day to day life, I'm either listening to like an audio book or like just straight up silence or I'm creating. I'm like constantly creating. So it's like, you know, I don't I don't ingest as much. But there's definitely some great music out there. What do I listen to? Oh, um, my friend, her name is Tamar. She's really dope. She signed with like Isa Ray's um label. She just released like an EP not too long ago. It's pretty fire. So that's like one. But yeah, just think, yeah, there's honestly a bunch of Tamar. good music out there. I like Tamar, yeah. Her name is T E A M A R R. And you should listen to the song Done or In My Mind. Those are really good songs. All right. Nice, uh, nice pitch there. Um, so yeah. do, do you also do your own cover art? Because you have really cool cover art. And I seem to recall that I saw that somewhere. Yeah, I've done like all my cover art. That's amazing. I mean, honestly, yeah. like I think in the, it just goes to show like what you're talking about, like to, to be the CEO of your own life. You know, to really take control is like you have to multitask these days and do, so. you know, and you're really um, expressing your creativity in, in, in so many ways. But you started out as an influencer, which is mm -hmm. kind of not as creative of a medium in some ways because, you know, you're, you're more it's more of a modeling kind of thing. But tell me a little bit about how you started as an influencer and why you think it picked up so much and so fast. Um, I think at the time I was just a little bit unconventional for the platform. So I represented maybe girls that didn't typically see themselves on Instagram. I definitely didn't expect to like gain followers like that or anything. Really, I was just being myself. And I felt like, you know, just my surroundings, um, working a retail job at the time and just posting pictures of myself, etc. Gain that. And I think also my voice definitely had a a very huge part in gaining my followers because you know not just the way I looked or whatever but I would also just talk about self-love and you know advocate for just all that good stuff so yeah I think that's what happened but I mean I'm grateful <laughs> when did you start on Instagram I think it was like I would say probably 2016 So, yeah, I was reading, this is kind of a weird question, but I was reading that you dropped out of high school or you kind of flunked out of high school and got a job at American Apparel. <laughs> is that the job you were just referring to? Yeah. So I, I guess that also explains kind of this kind of interesting uh, fashion vibe that you had because they, they're quite un unconventional. But um, did you ever meet uh, the founder, Dove Charney, by any chance? Because he's, he's kind of a strange character. And I'm curious to know <laughs> if anything ever, you know, transpired no. there. No, I've never met him. I think I like, saw him once. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, I mean, I, I could see how some of the aesthetic that you cultivated would have kind of been inspired by, by the aesthetic there. And it's kind of, the, it's not just you. I mean, it's inspired this whole new kind of um, trend yeah. that we're seeing. And and frankly, it's, uh, it's really f refreshing to see um, people like you and how the industry is changing in, in terms of the standards of beauty that they're, they're presenting and the diversity that, that we're seeing. It's, it's, you know, 
beauty is really imperfection at the end of the day. So to see, you know, the, the same thing over and over, f- frankly, was getting a little old. So yeah, for sure. Clearly, you're a beautiful uh, girl, and um, Thank you. <laughs> and you have a cool sense of style as well. Like, how would you define your your sense of style? Because it's not you, you somehow manage to present something that's attractive, but that's not you know, the usual, very skimpy or trendy kind of stuff. So how would you describe it? Um, Well, honestly, I feel like in my day-to-day life, I honestly don't post a lot of my favorite outfits because in my day-to-day life, I feel like I'm very, like, fly and quirky. Uh, (laughs) But, yeah. What would you wear? Like, what do you mean? uh, Like, I like layers. I like fun little tops like i like thrifting a lot i like vintage stuff so i'll just wear some really funky cute top or like i like flannels or like an overthrow i like i like um like boy jeans like just just men men's pants in general i like i love sneakers so stuff like that like yeah definitely um i like jewelry stuff like that so but the colorful stuff that yeah. but the stuff that we see you in is usually stuff like that you're modeling as part of your mm-hmm. work correct yeah so what are some of the brands that you're working with now um i'm working right now currently with this brand called rep dolls and they're just they're really dope they're like east coast based um size inclusive stuff like that so yeah we just have a cute relationship um but yeah i just i i, I want to work with more like low-key and like independent type um, companies like I definitely just got some vintage clothes from LA. Their name is the Vintage Souk, and they're actually operated by like two Middle Eastern sisters in LA, so they're pretty fire too. Ah, amazing! Thanks for that uh, that inside info. Whoever is heading to LA, although traveling is not really on on the <laughs> you know in the stars this summer for most of us, for a lot of us. So just you dropped a track recently uh, called Movie. Mm-hmm. And yes. I just want I just thought it would be cool to kind of go through some of the lyrics so people <laughs> could understand like what you're doing. <laughs> so okay. give us the lyrics that are in the excerpt that you posted on Instagram if you have them off the top of your head. <laughs> All right. I mean, they're a little bit like frisky. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Frisky, I like that. That's so, such a nice way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but um, the lyrics are, My life a movie, but better, but better. He get me higher and wetter. <laughs> um, thought you was... Can I curse or what? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thought you was fucked up. I moved on what I assumed was true, but I don't assume no more. That's on me, not on you. Don't feel like work because I'm just passionate as fuck. <laughs> I'm going to do me. <laughs> Get rich by accident. Just watch. Um, Get rich by accident. Just watch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's, well, that's I think, the majority of it. Yeah. yeah, we get an idea. So it's kind of very uh, like what we started talking about, very authentic and, and stuff that's obviously, uh, you know, it's almost like I would call it poetry in a way, like without any censorship of, of in any <laughs> shape or form. But how, yeah. like, how do you come up with the lyrics and... I really, I really wonder how, how, because I asked you this before, how you, you don't censor, how can you, like, you're laughing now. Is it different if you, to say that, like, to say those lyrics and if you're having a conversation versus performing them in a song? Is there, is that what makes it, like, like, gives you a certain kind of comfort zone? Is that what it is? Yeah, I think it's, um, it's a beautiful space to just, like, self-explore, soul-explore, etc. And... Yeah, it's like it's our own art. It's like an expression of our soul. So it's not just like me on a day to day basis talking to. Well, some people might, you know, I would think some people might find it uncomfortable. My my perspective is that when you normalize like these kinds of things and it's no longer a taboo and then 
or you know people are more comfortable talking about more th- honest things and you know ultimately that's a really good thing so i love what you're doing congratulations what what are you working on next hmm, right now i'm just really focused on evolving my technical skills so i'm like extremely passionate about that just because yeah i just realized how important it is um Yeah, so I'm just passionate about that. It's like honestly a lot to learn. Like engineering is really just its own its own world. Um, but I'm pretty excited. So after that, after I feel like I'm in a really good place, then I definitely want to um start curating my next project. I already have a bunch of gems that I've been saving for my next project. So definitely want to start working on that. But yeah, I'm just honestly following the flow where God takes me. <laughs> Any live shows coming up at, in the future at some point in 2000 future? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would hope so. I already got some requests for some bookings like overseas and stuff. So that would be really dope. I would appreciate if the world got us like act together and stuff. Yeah. We would all appreciate that. <laughs> that would be really nice. <laughs> and we'd love to and we'd love to see you here in the Middle East. So um yeah, looking so forward yeah. to that and, and best of luck in all your projects. Thank you. And thanks for talking to us. For sure. Thank you for having me. That's it, you guys. Thanks for listening today. And be sure to check out Dunya's music and Instagram account and ours as well. And don't forget to click that subscribe button. See you soon.